Hey, it's James here from goodguitarist.com, and today I'm going to show you how to change the strings on your acoustic guitar. You'll see here I have the most standard type of acoustic guitar. The strings go into the bridge with these little bridge pins. They go through the nut and then into the tuning heads. There's like a little hole that you poke the string through and then you tighten it with the tuning head. There's three on each side. If your guitar is different, please let me know in the comments down below. Describe it and I will make another lesson with that type of guitar in mind. Now, before we break it all down, and I will break it down, everything from string selection to making sure that your guitar stays in tune once you've put the new strings on it, we're gonna go over all that. But first, for those of you who just wanna see it done, I'm gonna change a string in real time right now. So I start out by unwinding the strings. I'm just using a peg winder, which makes it super quick. And I clip it uh, there and just unwind it carefully from the tuning head. Now I'm going to remove the bridge pin. My uh, peg winder has like a little removal thing on the back and the string is out. That's really all there is to it. Now I uh, shuffle around these strings, which takes longer than I'd like. I find the string that I need to put on there, which is the low E string. I believe it's uh, the one labeled 53. That's like the gauge. And then I'm going to put the ball end where the bridge pin goes. And I'm going to make sure that I pull it up into the slot. And I'm lining up the tuning head so that the hole will accept the new string. I pull it back a little bit and then I uh, am just cinching the string to give it a little bend. And I'm going to wind it up. I have to reposition my hand because the, the tuning pegs on this guitar are small and they're kind of slipping out of my, my peg winder, which is annoying. I'll clip off the excess. push in the bridge pin just because it comes a little bit loose sometimes. And now I'm going to uh, bring it roughly up to tune. And then I'm going to stretch the string and I'm going to stretch it a lot. I spend about as much time stretching it as I do putting on a new string. And I retune. You can hear how much lower it got from stretching it. So that's how you do it. Now I'm going to go through that in much more detail. And afterwards, when it comes to actually learning guitar, if you enjoy taking guitar lessons with me, I recommend that you grab my free ebook. It's free for all my subscribers. I'll put a link to that in the corner. And with that said, let's break this all down. As far as materials, the only two things we need are a fresh pack of strings and some cutting pliers but it's nice to have a peg winder to wind up the tuning heads really quickly and a cloth because when you remove your strings, it's easy to get in and clean up all that dust that accumulates underneath them. Now, there are two schools of thought when it comes to removing the strings. You can switch one string at a time or you can take off a few or even all of them at once. And some people will tell you that when you take them all off at once, it will ruin the setup on your guitar. Um, that's up for debate. I personally haven't experienced that, but if you wanna be safe, just in case, change one string at a time. Although you won't be able to easily clean your guitar if you don't take off all the strings at once, you know? So there's upsides and downsides. Um, I'm gonna do the D string, you know, E, A, D, the third thickest string. I use a peg winder because it's so much quicker, but you can loosen it with your fingers. Either way, we find the corresponding tuning heads. We're doing the D string. We just follow it all the way to the tuner. It's that one right there. And we loosen the string. We can do that with the peg winder and it is much, much quicker. Although mine is a little bit loose because these tuning heads are tiny. They're exceptionally strange. Either way, you get the string till it's like rattling loose, like, you know, it incredibly loose you can just pick it up and I like to cut the thing right here and we are going to carefully unwind our string and try not to yank on it because when you yank on it it can scratch your machine head and it'll also like fly back and hit you in the hand happened to me many many times now we're gonna remove the bridge pin 
And my uh, peg winder has a little slot on the back that I can, uh, can you see it there? I can just pop that in there and remove the bridge pin. You can also use like pliers, but I recommend taping them off just like a plumber or an electrician would. So you don't leave tool marks on your bridge pins. Anyways, I just get in there and you know, this came out pretty easily because I change my strings regularly. If you don't change them regularly, it might get a little gunky. You might have to put a bit more force into it, but you know, don't uh, hurt anything. Anyways, I'm gonna take that string bit, put it with the rest of my string bits, nice and safe. And I'm gonna take that, uh, bridge pin and put it somewhere where it's not going to fall off and roll over and go all over the place. One final step here in the removal process, we're going to turn the machine head so that the hole lines up so that the string can go straight into it. That's going to come in handy in a minute. Either way, our string is removed and now we can put the new string on there. So we open up our pack of strings and um, the Ernie Ball ones come in individual envelopes, so I like to lay them out from thickest to thinnest. I know with Daddario brand strings, they all come together in a little bag, and there's like a little color coding thing. The little ball on the end, on these strings, they're all gold, but on those ones, there's like red and purple and green, and that tells you what string it is. Uh, and there's like a little legend on the outside of the package, so don't uh, throw the package away before you actually put on the strings. Either way, I lay them out. I have my replacement string and I'm going to unwind it carefully so I don't, you know, take a string tip in the eye. And then I'm going to put the ball end into that hole in the bridge that I created when I pulled out the old string. I'm going to take my bridge pin and you'll notice that your bridge pin has a little slot in it. Well, the string fits in that slot and when you pull it up in the bridge, it doesn't stay underneath the pin. It actually comes up. It's kind of like wedged in between the underside of the bridge and the side of the pin. And the reason why this is important is because uh, if it's stuck underneath the pin, later when you go to tune the string, you'll hear it snap into place and it's like boom! And it's kind of a scary moment and you know we want to avoid that. Let's just pull it into the right spot. To do that, I'm gonna put the ball end just inside the hole. I'm not gonna like stick it all the way in. It's just inside the hole. Then I push it down with my pin, remembering to line up the slot with that side. And I pull on the string as I push down the bridge pin and if you do it right when you pull it won't pull the bridge pin out if the bridge pin kind of comes out when you pull on the string it means it's pushing it from underneath we apply a little bit of pressure not too much don't go crazy and that's all there is to it on this end now we're ready to run the string all the way along the fretboard just pulling on it gently through the nut and then we poke it into that little hole. Remember we lined it up? Well, now we can go all the way through without issue. And I'm just gonna put my fingers on the other end of the headstock and tug on the string. Make sure everything's in order, everything's lined up. And I'm gonna grab the string at the first fret, and then I'm gonna pull it to the second fret. That's the perfect amount of distance that you wanna pull it back. And then, using my cord hand, I'm going to take the opposing end of the string and I'm going to bend it over the tuning head. And now we're ready to wind up the string. And what I like to do is take my strumming hand and I hold the string down and I press it. You can see I'm pressing the string down right here. I can begin to wind the string and you want to wind it so that the fresh part of the string is coming on the inside of the tuning head. And make sure that the windings are going underneath and as it gets tight enough, I'm gonna make sure it goes into the nut slot, make sure we're there, push the bridge pin down a little bit. So you just wind it up till it's tight. Um, I wouldn't really tune it at this point, but just get it close. Uh, if you have another guitar, you can just pluck the, in this case, the D string, and then compare it. You know, and just get it close. The string is gonna loosen during the stretching process, so you know, no point busting out the tuner. Um, speaking of which, we will take our cutters, now that our string is tight, and we will cut. I like to leave, I'd say, I don't know, a little more than a quarter inch or seven millimeters, just eyeballing it. Um, anyways, now that we're done one string, it's simply a matter of repeating that process for the rest of the strings. I've discovered over time what works best for me is I take off both the middle strings, so the D and G strings. I already did the D string, I'll do the G string now. So I'm just changing the G string here. And normally I'll do two strings at a time. That speeds up the process. Remove two strings, put two strings on, and so on. 
if you do take out more than one string at a time, make sure you put your bridge pins on the pack of strings that they correspond to. Uh, that's a really good way to make sure you don't, because the bridge pins are usually like sanded down to be perfect for a particular hole on your guitar, right? And a little tip here, when you get to the two thinnest strings, they don't have any winding on them. They're just like the core, you know, the string feels smooth. When you are, uh, instead of just making a kink in it, what you do is you hold that string end and you take the longer piece that's running over your fretboard and you're going to wind it over top of the string and you wind it in reverse. So you wind it out and then in and that it, you want it to end up coming down on the inside. I'm going over this uh, string bit that's hanging off the end here. You tighten your string up and I'm going to push it down so it's underneath. And then we'll end up with like a little over under kind of thing. And I'll just finish up here with the last two strings. Either way, once you've changed every string, we're ready for our first rough tuning. And for that, I start with a reference pitch. And I usually, I'll have another guitar around. I'll pluck the, the low E string and get it close. Uh, you can always just use like a pitch generator on your phone or online. I'll try to find one and put a link down below. And then, you, yeah, you just match your string, your lowest string, and then you use the usual tuning method. So the fifth fret of the thickest string gets us the next one. And then the fifth fret gets us the next one. You know, and it's not about accuracy. It's just about getting in the ballpark. And the next step is to stretch the strings. And that's going to take them way out of tune. And that's why we didn't spend too much time tuning them right there. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my hand, my strumming hand, over all the bridge pins. Then I'm going to take my other hand and I'm going to grab the string at the 12th fret, the thickest string, and I'm going to pull on it. And this may look like a lot, but you can actually support the guitar from that point. Nothing's going to happen, right? So you give it a good yank. You do that for the next one. And you notice I'm like jiggling it and really pulling on it. I do that for all the strings. So I did them all at the 12th fret. Now I'm going to put my chord hand on the strings at the 12th fret. Then I'm going to take my other hand and I'm going to stretch them. I'm just going to cut the, the string in half again. So I'm kind of pulling at the part where you'd usually strum them. You know, your pick normally goes right there. And I'm going to do the same thing. Just yank on them. And, you know, you can really go to town. Strings are made out of metal. They're stretchy. They're, they're meant for this, right? And uh, yeah, then I'm going to swap hands, put my strumming hand on the 12th fret, and I'm going to once again cut the string in half, but the other side now, and give it all a good stretch. We've done it in halves and in quarters, basically. And now there's one last thing that I'd like to do, and I basically just grab the string, and I go along the whole thing like this, just going like a couple inches or you know a few centimeters at a time. And I just grab it, and I... And I just like, you know, I move my hands in opposite directions. I pull with one hand and I push with the other. Pull, push. And I just do that all the way along each and every string. I really want to make sure that every string is stretched all the way up and down. That way, if uh, say I'm like about to play a gig, my guitar is not going to go flat constantly because that's what happens when you just leave it. Your guitar will go flat for like days possibly if you don't stretch the strings, you know. You can use a cloth, you know, sometimes uh, it feels a bit like, like especially those thinner strings. I don't like them like rubbing on my fingers. It feels like they're gonna cut into them. I know it's not, but it's like a weird thing I have. I don't like needles and stuff like that either. And uh, you know, you can use a cloth and do the same thing all the way up and down the strings. And then at this point, um, we're gonna tune it again. Another rough tuning just getting in the ballpark. And now I'm gonna do another stretch, but this time I'm not gonna be so thorough. I'm just gonna pull on it at the 12th fret and jiggle it, just like when we first started. And now we're finally ready to tune it properly with a tuner. And once you get to the thinnest string, you're gonna to have to go back to the thickest string. It'll probably be a little bit flat. And we go through them again. So we actually tune them tw like several times, but with our tuner, we do it twice just to double check, just to make sure. And that's a good habit anyways. And 
there we go. Now at this point, we would clean up. And that's pretty much all there is to it. If you wanna learn guitar better, I have a course, Learn Guitar Once and For All, that takes you from absolute beginner to confident strummer, taking out all the guesswork and guiding you through each step so that you can play your favorite songs. Um, I'll put a link below for that. Anyways, I hope you have a fun time practicing guitar. Let me know if you need anything in the comments down below, and I'll see you soon. Yeah.